on the on the wider PGA, yeah. um, I do a bit of research on you and found out you're a member of the Trilateral Commission. Yeah. And um, I feel quite concerned about the idea that, which is a secret society set up by David Rockefeller. Uh, David Rockefeller. Uh, uh, every very meeting very is held very behind closed doors. Well, sure, it's a private meeting, but it, it's not secret. The, no, no information comes out about your meeting. No, but <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, but my, my point is, um, I'm concerned that as to where, not just you, other people as well, where, where your loyalty would lay, say, in a, uh, a difficult decision, would your loyalty lay with the people or would it lay with the Trilateral Commission, who, for example, uh, David Ruffin makes no secret of the fact that he's, he would like a one world government. And it seems to me that... Who is this David Rockefeller? You must know who David Rockefeller is. No. I don't believe you. Well, I don't know who he is. I David mean, Rockefeller he... founded, he set up yeah. the Trilateral Commission. Is he still alive? Yes, very much so. Well, I've never seen He's him one of the meeting. richest, powerfulest people. Well, no, Rockefeller's have that reputation, yeah. but I've never... Um, um, when I go to the Trilateral Commission... Um, I've never seen his name on any other bits of paper. I've never seen. So can you see paper. my um, can you see my concern that? No, I can't well, feel this. The Rockefeller the, uh, Commission is a completely harmless. <laughs> the Trilateral Commission was set up by David Rockefeller as an offshoot of the Bilderberg Group. The Bilderberg Group. Yes. Okay. I think you know. I think you know this. No, I don't know at all. I mean, I was invited to become a member of it. I, I guess about ten years ago. Um, and it was a. Uh, uh, its aim was to bring together, in, uh, the, in the origin, the United States, Japan, and, Japan, yeah. and um, uh, Western Europe. Yeah. Um, and it's now it's evolved over time since then. But, you know, uh, any other, it's, it's mostly people who are retired who belong to it. The idea very, that, that, that's the, a, the idea that's, they're very, very powerful, influential, wealthy, uh, and important people that are part of that organisation. God, you're making me feel really good about myself now. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I have to tell you that this is... Uh, no, quite. So people like Bill Clinton. Uh, Bill Clinton w was a member. member. Of it? Yeah. Uh, people like um, the Duke of Edinburgh, people like the Duke of Kent, uh, the top three Mason in the country. There's, um, there's, there are some enormously wealthy, enormously influential and powerful people. I honestly think you're sort of a, uh, slightly subject to a conspiracy theory here. No, not so. Not so. Okay, well, you, uh, you know um, much more about the Trinatural Commission than I do, and I've been a member of it. I mean, you, you were very pro the Iraq War when I wrote to you last time. Yeah, oh, you're, still pro, you're still yeah, pro the Iraq War. Even though you've got the dodgy dossiers, you've got... Um, the head of MI6 at the time saying that the policies and facts were fixed around Iraq. Um, he came back from America and said that. It's obvious that we've been conned. There's no way there's mass disruption. Um, what, how, can you, how can you justify that position of being still... A million people, a million people are dead. Civilians are dead in well, you don't Iraq. That's a most people, thing. most people are saying that. No, most people they're, are saying no, they're not. They're just not. I mean, that's a complete speculative thing. Check it out yourselves, everybody on the internet or whatever. Check it out. But how can you still be? How can you still be in favour of that war? How can you still be supportive of that war? Because I think it was the right thing to do. But, but we now know it wasn't that. They didn't have no, weapons of mass destruction. No, 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 you, it's your opinion that it wasn't right. In my opinion is that it was. So, it's, so it's right for... A mistake have been made. A mistake, no, lies have been told. That, that big no, lies. Retrospective mistake. No, big no. deliberate lies. Deliberate yeah. lies. Um, we do all think It's interesting, our son um, was in the army, and he's still got many friends in the army, who have been in Iraq and everything. The army are all for that war. My personal was very happy about it. The army thought it was the right thing to do. At the time you were talking about. And now, still. Not the feedback I get from the people I talk to. Um, about. And my son is in the his army. In the Fighting tank, Prince of the World is Royal Regiment. They're in the thicket. They're the ones that won all these things without the Hari and all the others. His friends are the ones that went in the tank in Europe. And they think that they're and you don't get me wrong, I support the troops. I want to bring them home. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to bring them home. That's what I'm But the troops think it's right. I personally don't, but the troops do. Yeah, and I think it's true. I mean, I think um, Iraq is a better place for not being governed by a tyrant. I don't, think, I don't think most of the inhabitants of Iraq would agree with you on that. They've got less water, they've got less electricity now than they had under Saddam Hussein, less food, less water, less everything. 
Well, I mean, maybe you'd prefer to live under a tyranny than in a democracy. Right. Thank you very much. I, I'm very dubious as to we do live under a democracy. And it's very patronising of you, if I may say so, yeah, to project uh, to Iraqi people. You've never lived under a tyranny. I haven't. You've never lived under some brute who... Have you? Have you? Me. No, I haven't. No. So I you've never lived in a world, in a country, where uh, the per guy who happens to be the government can feed his political opponents feet first into the plastic shredding machine. I agree, I have So actually it's very patronising no, not you to say it's wrong for us to have liberated people. Mm. We that. haven't liberated them. Yes, we have. It's chaos over there. there. Well, it's it may chaos, be chaos. I don't actually accept that it is chaos, but it is a free country now where people choose their own government. And that's something which you have, you smugly sit there and have the benefit of because actually people, your forefathers, have died to give you that freedom. Yeah, and our governments are giving, are giving that power that and freedom away to Europe. Well, that's a diff totally different it's not. issue. <laughs> yes, it is a totally different issue. No. Uh, and you may be right about that. Um, I don't buy all of what you say on that. But it's completely different from whether it was right to get rid of Saddam Hussein. You have absolutely no doubt whatever it was. Well, you've got a situation where you're the minority try could you, could you clarify something? Because, I, mean, I know your position on Europe now. I believe you voted against the Lisbon Treaty yeah. recently, right? Yeah. How far back has your attitude towards Europe been like that? Well, I mean, I've always been... Um, believe, I've always believed that the main purpose of it is um, to provide... Trade, yeah. the, reason, the reason I ask that question is because you personally signed the Maastricht yeah. Treaty. Yeah. So, how can you... How do the two positions... How well, can you justify those two positions? The Maastricht Treaty um, did uh, some important things. Um, I mean, it was mainly about... meant to be about finishing the single market. Um, and about uh, cooperation on some things which I think are useful. Like and integration of Europe. Hmm? And integration of Europe. Yeah, but actually a big part of it was about, I mean, the biggest areas of greater cooperation were done on the basis of cooperation between governments, not not um, creating more EU competencies. I mean, all the home affairs stuff was all in the intergovernmental pillar. As this was said, and all that's been changed, all that's been moved under the Lisbon Treaty into. Which, in, in every other word, is the EU constitution. There's only 10 differences in that document. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean know, we are being conned. Listen, if you listen to Ken Clark, who likes it, not being conned. Con we we we're, we're not being um, conned, us. We are not. No, we are. Yeah. I, mean, I don't gone. know what your view on this is, but. but Ken, what Clark, Ken Clark, if he were here, his view and mine would be completely different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we, we would agree yeah. on this. Yeah. But yeah. we would agree on this, which is that the Lisbon Treaty is the European Constitution. That's correct. Yeah, and, that's just and from what I understand... There's only ten differences, apparently. Yeah. 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 Yeah.